I have a bulletproof process for buying a business that is repeatable and it works every time. So in today's video, I thought it would be prudent that I give you my bulletproof business buying blueprint that you can use and it'll work every time. Let's get to it. everyone, welcome to my channel. I am your host, Leo Landaverde, business broker and commercial lender, helping you buy and scale a profitable business. If you are a small business owner looking to increase your wealth by buying a profitable business, or a corporate employee sick and tired of the rat race wanting to get out by buying a profitable business, you are in the right place. Please subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to hit the bell and you'll be notified every Thursday when new content comes out. Number one, deal flow. No deal flow, no business. People underestimate the, the work that goes into deal flow. And they think that deals are just online and they're just in biz by sell. Whatever you find in biz by sell is nothing but, nothing but a sliver of the deal flow. All the deals that are out there, only a very small percentage of the deals actually happen on market on biz by sell. So there's over 800 websites that are dedicated to listing on market deals. There is not such thing as an MLS system uh, for the business brokering world. So it's kind of the wild west. So every brokerage will have their own version of the MLS and they will have their own inventory listed on their websites. Some may or may not make it into the biz by sell uh, marketplace. Um, there's a lot of other things. So what I always suggest if when you're looking at businesses to buy, you should assume that there's going to be a whole lot of competition on the on market stuff. So I suggest you do a twofold approach, do an on market strategy at the same time, use an off market strategy, what I call a bifurcated approach. You're attacking both at the same time. When you took it to, when you're dealing with on market, you're dealing with brokers. When you're dealing with off-market, you're dealing with the FISBOs, the full sale by business owners. It's a different strategy, it's different scripts, it's different uh, terminology, and you talk to them differently. When you're talking to the brokers or market, you're talking shop, you're talking details. It's unemotional. They are hired to list these websites to sell them, and they want the highest price that you can get. With that comes pre-qualification, saying source of funds, and you need to jump through hoops. You're competing. It's a race. There's, there's a lot of people, really, really good businesses are pre-sold. Let me say that again. Really, really good businesses are already pre-sold. By the time a business makes it into the biz by sell on marketplace, there's already a lot of buyers that have already signed NDAs, they have received SIMs, they're, they're talking to their team, and they're ready to make offers. And here you come looking for those businesses. The chances are the broker has already got their eye on whatever buyers. I can tell you from experience because that's what I do. So if you come to me and you don't know me, you respond to one of my listings, which I have uh, multiple listings at any time on market. Usually if you come through that channel, you'll be like, hey, nice to meet you. You know, here's, here's, here's your NDA, here's your business profile. Don't fill if you don't fill those and they're fully executed and signed, we're not we're done talking. There's no need for us to keep because I get over a hundred, a couple hundred buyer leads every week. So that's the on market approach. And does it work? Yes. I have some of my students produce great sales with on market, but now off market, which is often neglected, it takes a little more work, which means you have to find out where the business owners hang out. Where are their watering holes? Where are these business owners in industry specific? Off-market only works when you have an industry in mind. If you have more than two, probably no more than three, that's when the off-market really works because you're going to dive deep into that industry. You're going to hang out with them wherever they hang out, whether in social media or, or, or basically offline, um, what conferences they attend, and what how do you, there's ways that I teach on how to get their information so you can reach out to them. You can send them postcards and mailers. It's, it's more of a, it's, it's a longer game, but one where you have no competition. One of our students right now has a deal under contract for $2.3 million with 700,000 plus worth of selling discretionary earnings under contract, totally an off market strategy. So it works. So, you're going to be doing a whole lot of tracking. I have all the uh, collateral materials, but deal flow, you should be doing, you should be reaching out to a broker or 
any time, any, anything from five to 10 times a week in order to create the kind of deal flow that you want. Pretty soon, if you have multiple brokers that you developed over time, they're gonna be feeding you deals, but it takes time. It doesn't happen overnight. So you need to know that going in, this is gonna be a marathon. So once you get your deal flow underway and you're getting traction and you're tracking all those deals, we move on to the second step, which is deal analysis. Now, um, for if you have not downloaded my Deal Analyzer 2.0, it's gone out to my list, it's been downloaded over a thousand times already, this is the next version of Deal Analysis and I released that to you for being a subscriber. Now, the, 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 the bigger Deal Analyzer is kept for those who are inside my group. If you wanna know how to work with me and my buying group, please reach out to me directly because I am taking in applications right now so deal analysis, when you're doing deal analysis, we actually take whatever information is given to us by the broker, you're dealing with an all-market transaction, you're gonna be dealing with a broker, you're gonna be doing with a confidential information memorandum or a confidential business review, whatever that is, is confidential, 10 to 30 pages worth of information. I'll show you exactly how to digest, how to curate, how to extrapolate all this information into our deal analyzer so you know, understand. We need to know what we're dealing with. When we're doing deal analysis, it's a comparing two sets of data, whatever is given to you by the broker and whatever you're gonna extrapolate yourself with the knowledge I'm gonna teach you. So you take you know, their purchase price, their revenue, the cash flow, it calculates the multiple, whatever the deal structure is. You're gonna have sellers that they just, I don't wanna have anything to do, I want all cash at close, which means I'll take no seller carry, I want you to come up with whatever, however you're gonna structure the deal, I want cash at close, and I want four times seller cash flow. Whatever that is, you just need to know what that is, you need to know what you're dealing with. And I always say that what whatever the broker thinks the business is worth is irrelevant to me because we're gonna do our own valuation, which I'm gonna teach you how to do. Deal analysis is about understanding what moves the needle, understanding industry metrics, understanding KPIs, understanding where you go to get comparable sales and where those apply, whether it is a main street business or a lower middle market business. I, we specialize in lower middle market, those who are between one and $20 million worth of revenue with valuations anywhere from half a million to five million. Are you stuck and trying to figure out what to do next in your business buying process? Let me help you and help you get the guesswork out of it. Wherever you are in your journey, I would love to coach you for free, give you a complimentary call and help you get to where you wanna go. Whether we work together or not, you're gonna find that this is gonna be very actionable and full of knowledge. So reach out to me, you can drop me a comment below or you can send me an email. My email address is always on top here. Let's connect. That's the sweet spot for SBA lending. So when you're doing deal analysis, always keep in mind what would the lender think? We're basically pre-underwriting the deal. We wanna know, turn the tax returns, revenue, cost of goods, operating expense, net profit, add backs from the seller, what does look like year over year over year? What are the trend lines? More important than the numbers, I wanna know the percentages. Percentages are more important than the numbers. So if you remember that, so when we're doing our analysis and operating concern in the, in the third tab of our workbook and our deal analysis, analysis workbook, all of that gets laid out and it starts telling you a story that moves on to the deal analysis front sheet. And now you know what you're dealing with as far as what they, I need to know what the average three year, the last three years, 23 years of revenue and cash flow as our own definition of cash flow with depending on the size of the deal could be adjusted EBITDA, it could be selling discretionary earnings. So more on that later. So once we have all those things, we need to understand what our down payment needs to be, what our cash and cash return is gonna be, what the potential down payment is gonna be for you, whether it's zero, five, 10%, yes, there's such thing as a 0% down payment. And if you're a business owner buying a like for like business, most likely you could leverage your strong balance sheet to buy a business. So temper, say whatever we lay out, whatever we think we need to, are we, are we gonna ask for working capital? Is there any excess inventory? Is it gonna be a stock purchase agreement or is it gonna be an asset purchase agreement? There's differences between the two. We lay out the deal, how we're gonna structure the deal. And we know that if we do X amount of things, we're gonna get this deal approved, which means that we work in tandem with the lender. We wanna have this deal pre underwritten really long before we make an offer. Making an offer is gonna be incidental. So we already know they have the lender. That's why when you work with me and my group, we are cash buyers. 
everything has been sorted out. We make offers on deals we can easily manage post debt service cash flow that it makes sense. Uh, debt service coverage ratio is one and a half or better. Uh, regardless of what the lenders think, we want to minimize our risk. So you see, there's a lot that goes on in deal analysis. That's step two. Step three is deal making. So we get all those deal points straight out of our deal analyzer, move their way into the letter of intent. Rarely ever will you need to go into an asset purchase agreement. I strongly recommend if you're dealing businesses that are north of $1 million purchase price, you use a letter of intent. Although it's non-binding, if you follow our prescriptive template that we use, several of the clauses on the letter of, letter of intent will survive uh, if you decide to fall out, like um, the sh no shop exclusivity clause. Uh, we want to make sure that, of course, there's uh, confidentiality agreements, um, the, the separation of the investment that the, that the buyers and sellers are making as you analyze the deal. This is long before you get the asset purchase agreement in place. All of the structuring takes place inside of our deal making process. So um, then we put together the letter of intent. The letter of intent is put together, and then the negotiations that come with it. All of that happens inside of deal making. Sorry about that. My dog was barking. So, structuring, letter of intent, negotiations that is step three. Step four is due diligence. If you did the work properly on the deal analysis, then you follow the process to the letter of intent. Then due diligence becomes a breeze. You pre-underwrote the deal. I'll show you when to bring in the, te the rest of the team. When do you bring in the lender? Very when do you bring the M&A attorney? When do you bring the due diligence CPA? When do we bring everybody else? When do you put your deal term together? All of those are happening simultaneously, but we're now in due diligence. Now the train has left the station. We're putting the asset purchase agreement together. We're narrowing down, we're, dry, we're drilling deeper into the financials. We wanna make sure that whatever was represented to us in the same checks out on the other side. There's checks and balances. This is where accounting comes into play. For 10 years prior to BBB becoming a broker, I was doing deal due diligence for either buyers or sellers on very large transactions. So I know what to look for and I teach my students on what they should be looking for. So step four. Step five is financing. Then not necessarily one after the other. Some of those things are happening simultaneously. While we're doing the deal analysis, we're pre-underwriting the deal, getting ready for the lender. So the financing piece goes immediately. You have the LOI fully executed. We're making sure that we have ample runway ample time to get our due diligence done and remove that contingency and we get the lender on board. I usually like to work with several lenders and get choose the one that you think is going to get the deal closed. More important than the rate is the assurances from the lender that you're going to get the term sheet and you're going to get the letter of commitment. The commitment letter from the lender is going to get the deal done. I don't really care about what the rate is going to be so long as it cash flows. It gives us the debt service coverage ratio, whether it's variable or fixed. People spend time on the wrong things. Will this deal close is the most important thing. So financing is a big thing. Then we move into step six is escrow and closing. Escrow. You have a fully executed APA. You move into escrow, which means there are escrow states and attorney states. You need to know whatever state you're buying the business is, whether there is an escrow state or an attorney state. It changes how you approach it. Then you get into escrow. Fully executed APA is what drives the, the earnest money and everything else that you're negotiated in the letter of intent. You get the APA. Now the clock is really ticking because you have warranties and representations on both sides. There are promises that you made to the seller that you better keep or else you're going to lose your earnest money. You have all your clauses and you're working in tandem to make sure that this, the assets are going to be free and clear, free of any liens or encumbrances that you're actually buying assets free and clear, and everything else that goes post the due diligence, post the financing stage, and this is when things kind of to begin to sort of align themselves, and some, there are some co-dependencies between the financing piece and the escrow, and some things will fall off. Eventually, you're going to have your due diligence signed off on. You're going to waive that contingency moving to the financing piece while you work with escrow and removing all those things that happen to have it during escrow so there is a legal exchange of assets and then we move on to closing so that's really the process in a nutshell now there is layers and layers and layers between as you can imagine even if I was going fast there's much more that I haven't told you because 
the kind of the way I approach it with our group, you know, if you want to know more about our group, please reach out to us. Is because it's just in time knowledge. You don't need to know about escrow if you don't have a deal under contract, and you don't really need to do deal analysis unless you have deal flow. So, uh, hopefully that helps, guys. And uh, thank you for watching my video. For a limited time, I'm giving away my deal calculator and my business buying checklist. These two items have been downloaded over 3,000 times over the next the last few months. And they're my gift to you just to show you my appreciation for being a subscriber and put those to work and you're going to realize that they're worth their weight in gold. They're yours to have. All you have to do is click on the link below to have them.